Um, this talk is called CGIPM Must Die. And it started as a joke on IRC. And um, I decided I'm going to do this talk for real because I really do hate CGIPM. I really, really, really hate it. And I want it to die. And I'm going to have to ask you to help me. Now, I'm up against something really difficult, which is that guy over there. And I'm going to try and make a good case for why CGIPM should be killed fast and, and in a horrible manner, which will hurt. And he's going to try and make a case afterwards why CGIPM is insanely good and you should use it. So at the end of this, uh, at the end of this talk, we're going to ask, at least I'm going to ask everyone to take a vote how many people would kill CGIPM if they saw it and how many people would try to keep it alive, maybe through resuscitation, maybe in stress in hospital, I don't know. So. Not exhausted, it's exhausting. It's really exhausting to write in CGIPM. It's confused, and I'll explain that one. And if all of these reasons aren't good enough, then you might have a good reason also. Okay? If, if none of these reasons are good enough, you can use that one. Alright? So, why is it so? If, first of all, it's so slow it went on a race alone and came in second. That's, <laughs> that's how fucking slow CGIPM is. Um, CGIPM is not persistent. Which means that for every request that someone makes to a page that is written in CGIPM, you load the entire application, including all your modules, including CGIPM itself, including every logic, every piece of logic that you have there, everything gets loaded again, including the, the interpreter itself. The interpreter doesn't stay in the background, it keeps loading all the time, which makes it really, really, really slow. Now, in the old days when we had black and white TV, this was great, but we don't. We have color now, okay? And now it's just, it's way too slow. It's just way too slow. You cannot have an actual web page like booking.com, for example, or, well, pretty much almost any web page would be way too slow in CGI cam. It's just too much. And there are, there are ways to try and fix it, like CGI speed up, CGI compile, CGI fast, which uses fast CGI, which is a which allows persistency for CGI, and those would be good, unless, uh, except for CGI having a lot of problems, where speed is just one of the problems, not the only problem. If the only problem was uh, speed, then perhaps we would, could move to fast CGI, which is really good and, 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 and somewhat of a standard, right? Fast CGI the protocol, so that would be great, but it, it's not just speed, and obviously you cannot use every type of CGI module that tries to fix a certain problem. CGI itself is, is fucked up, so that's what we need to do, alright? Kill it, and kill it now. It's heavy, CGIPM is so heavy I couldn't fit it in this slide. I tried seven times, it's huge, it's really, really, really heavy, it crashed the browser. So, it's not just huge, it has a lot of uh, functions and methods that aren't used at all by anyone ever and this makes it really big and really uncomfortable <clears throat> now there's CGI light there's CGI simple again a lot of modules that try and fix problems with the size complete rewrites some um, modules that are based upon these or use them as a parent module and then they try to lower some of the overhead but it's just it's insane it's just too big and and same solution. CGIPM is ugly. It's so ugly it makes blind children cry. <laughs> if you write an application in CGIPM, a kitten will die. <laughs> so, for example, this is taken from the actual documentation for CGIPM. It says, uh, fetching the parameter list as a hash. 
I like this. I, you can't see this. Damn it. Let's remove some, some more lightings. There we go. Is that better? Or yeah. how's that? All right. Okay. So it says params get vars from from the uh, query object, the CGI query <coughs> object, and vars here is capital letter for some reason, and then you get the address from that, and then you split it using the um, the null terminator symbol. Like what the hell? <coughs> Seriously, this is not this is not a socket header. This is actually a parameter list. So this is this is ugly code. And well, yeah, we need to kill it. Just there's no other way. CJPM is so old it was invented before the internet. <laughs> right? It's that old. <laughs> When CGIPM was invented, there was no black and white, there was just white. That's it. There was just one color. But it is the biggest advantage of CGI, it's because Which it's all. Like you can it find it everywhere. It was good you could, do not times, need to ask to install it. But now we have color TV, and most people won't watch uh, black and white, although we do like uh, Hitchcock classics. Or something. Uh, it was written in 1995. The problem is not that it's old or that it was written in 1995. The problem is that it wasn't updated to use stuff that we have now. We have, we've learned a lot, and Pull itself as a language evolved plenty, but CGRPM hasn't. Recently, Mark Stosberg put a lot of effort into making it more secure and cleaner, but basically it's still the same piece of stuff. And uh, it doesn't use PSGI, for example, it doesn't use, it has no MVC structure, it doesn't have pretty or clean URLs, which are now the most common usage for web application URLs, and that's simply too much. What about Ajax? Ooh. Nothing has. Well, no Ajax system. is just, uh, you know, <coughs> well, I won't go into Ajax. It's not safe. I usually double glove before I touch CGIPM. You should too. Do not touch it by itself. This is a quote from the documentation. A potential problem with CGIPM is that by default, it attempts to process form post, post uh, no matter how large they are. Which means that if you send a post request for, for example, a form that you're like a user or a, a blog entry, it will process the entire thing. It doesn't even ask you. Now, there are ways to, to go around it, like limiting the, the amount, but there is no introspection prior to processing. And um, CJPM, the documentation is actually littered with a lot of documentation on, on a lot of problematic DDoS uh, or DDoS um, vulnerabilities. This is a DDoS problem because they can just push in a really huge post and bring down the server. It's, it's really simple. And it should be noted to their credit that they actually documented these things and it's written there. You can read it, it's easily, you can find it easily, and they explain how to try and go around these. So they did their best. The problem is not that they didn't document it. The problem is that how CGIPM is written, it will always be there. So the, you have CGI safe and you have CGI untamed, and one of those one of those was written by Ovid. So uh, um, so if he wrote one, it, it, it was worth writing, and if it was worth writing, it, I, I wouldn't use it. You guys. So, same solution, the only solution. CGIPM is so exhausting, I'm already tired of talking about it. It's really exhausting to write in CGIPM. All right? I'll give an example. <coughs> what I have is a new CGI object, I have to define a page and an ID. I used to have an array known pages, but Stefan, who's doing a talk over there, and he gave a talk earlier here, decided, said I should use a hash because it would be much faster, so I have a hash of the certain pages that I allow, and then I have to check using the parameters if I got a page, and then I have to check if that page exists, and then I have to check if I got an ID, and then I can do something with a page and an ID. And then I have three different else's, to catch if I don't have an ID, if, if I don't have uh, a page that I know of, or if I don't have a page at all. This doesn't even cover if the ID is not valid, or if it doesn't exist, or if a page... Um, there's just so much going on here. It's just a lot of boilerplate. Now this is a bit better. What I did is I created a, a 
function called exit nice, and that gets a message, and then I can use that. Now, you'll notice that I do exit zero. Uh, you have to exit by zero, or the process crashes. If you don't exit by zero, <coughs> the web server that's running it, like Apache, Lighty, uh, Nginx, whatever it is, it won't know that the script was successful. So it will think that maybe the script crashed, like, for example, you're using a module that is installed. Pro will crash with an exit code other than zero. So that's how Apache can tell you that there was an error. It's called internal server error. It's uh, number 500. And, um, and that means that when you're using CGI, you have to tell the web server that everything is fine. So you have to do this. Now, I'm not even showing here the printing of headers, because you have to print a first block of headers before you can print the actual content. So you have to create the headers. Don't worry, there's a ton of ways to create headers in CGI All right, so this is, this is really horrible. There's CGI args checker, which is supposed to take care of this. I have to write this shit every time I use CGI PM, and so do you. And this means how horrible it is. <laughs> this is just too exhausting. It takes you 20 minutes to start something without even doing anything. It's horrible. So. And in a modern web framework, you don't need this. <coughs> you don't need none of this, or you're going to see one. All right. So CGI PM is confused. And what I mean by confused is that CGI PM stuffs a lot of things that should be separate. For example, CGI will stuff the design and the um, content and the code for the actual application all inside one binary. For example, this mixes design, content, and code. And you can see this example where this is an example from the documentation for CGI PM. They're not ashamed of showing this. I'm ashamed of showing this, but they're not. <laughs> It prints a table with a caption and a TR and a TD and a TH and a blah 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 and there's a design even there for alignment and, and uh, vertical alignment and this is just, uh, um, I, I don't know, this is just so horrible on so many levels. When we started web, there was one person doing <coughs> everything. They did everything. One person did the design, which was crappy because everything was crappy, and one person did the content and one person did the uh, code, and everything was all stuffed together. This is why PHP has everything stuffed together. Like PHP doesn't have, PHP it has like embedded PHP inside HTML, and because they realized that it would be easier for that one person. But nowadays we know that it's easier to actually render some other out, some other input file like a template. So, well, the state now with PHP is that you have to open a rendered HTML with embedded PHP that has only PHP that calls another template to be rendered, which is backwards on backwards on backwards, and, and that's what PHP is stupid. But this does the same thing. This prints out a table using code. Like, you have HTML, why would you have this? And if you have HTML, why won't you put a template on it and let someone write the content, and someone else write the design, and someone else write the HTML, and you write the actual code? For, like the logic code, not just shitty stuff that doesn't mean anything. So this is this is another reason to hate CGIPM. And and again, I'll stress this. All right. So the question is, what you should do instead? If I don't have CGIPM, what should I do? Well, you can stop programming. But I I, I don't want to. So you can do other stuff. You can use a proper web framework. And what's a proper web framework? I'll give you some examples. Hopefully, it will be one that supports PSGI. Okay? <coughs> uh, PSGI is a standard that we now have written in Pro. It's a standard of how a web server and web application communicate. And this means that you can write your application in a way that works on any web server that supports PSGI. You will always return the same thing. You will always get things the exact same way, which means you have a standard and it doesn't change. The implementation can change, but what you get and what you return will always be the same. And it's incredibly, it incredibly simplifies stuff. It means that, for example, if you have a framework between your application and the web server, like the web framework, and they use PSGI, that means you can put that <coughs> framework properly <coughs> everywhere, on every web server. And it will always be the same. Even the way that you put it on, the way that you define it, almost always will be the same. Seriously incredible. So you should probably use a web framework that supports PSGI. 
question. So is it okay to switch on the uh, air condition? Because it's big, uh, yeah, okay. You can wear it. Okay. Does anyone mind? <laughs> See, I told you you should ask questions. It works. It works. All right. So I'll give you some examples. We have Catalyst, for example. That's a, a wonderful web framework that's really thought out. It's very decoupled. It's really interesting. It has contributed a lot of code outside of Catalyst. And I use Catalyst for some stuff, and I suggest you try it out. We have a Catalyst <coughs> developer here. Raise your hand. There you go. We came all the way from Germany. And um, we have Dancer, which is a web framework that I developed. Wait, just do the commercial for a second. So I, I, program a, a web, I, I work on a web framework called Dancer. It's, a, it's different than Catalyst. It's not better. It's not worse. It does something else. It tries to be much lighter, much smaller, much slimmer, much thinner, and to have different syntax for how to define things. And I'll give you some examples about Dancer. So there are other frameworks out there, and just go on CPAN and look for them, and there are a lot of web frameworks you can find one. Actually, you should use Dancer. But, but hell, you can even write in pure PSGI. You can even write straight to the server in the PSGI standard, it would be much better than CGIPM, all right? It, it really, it really, really would. So a little bit about Dancer. First of all, it's an effortless micro web framework. Uh, a lot of web frameworks are pretty big. Doesn't mean they're slow, doesn't mean they're bad, just means they're big, they have a big design, they have a lot of levels to them. Um, nowadays, we're seeing micro web frameworks, and micro web frameworks is frameworks that take much less, uh, um, let's say, file footprint. Like their syntax is slimmer, they take less files needed. A lot of them allow you to write the entire application in one file, though you probably shouldn't for major applications. And <coughs> this is what Dancer does. Um, it's lightweight, which means it's fast. It's simple, which means it's really, really, really easy to learn. <coughs> it's obviously Plaque and PSGI compliant. Plaque is actually an implementation, a proof of concept implementation of PSGI, am I right? Yeah, it's the reference implementation of PSGI itself. It's like PSGI is how you do it, PSGI is what you do, Plaque is how it's done. It has minimal dependencies, it has very, I think it has like four dependencies. Catalyst, for example, instead they decided to take a different approach, they said we're not going to rewrite the entire world, we're going to use as much as we can from tools other people more knowledgeable or that dedicated more time to it did, and we're going to use that. And Dancer takes somewhere between that and having no dependencies. We're going to use some things, but we're going to, we're going to try and limit the amount of dependencies that you have, so it would be easier for you to put it on your server and you don't have to install half of CPAN, as sometimes people say about Catalyst. Now, a few moves in Dancer. This is a Dancer application. I have a get there and a path. This means that the default path, just slash, whatever you go to first, slash, this is going to run that subroutine. And then I have a keyword called template. Now, the get there is for the get method, get HTTP method. There's post, get, put, whatever. Template there renders a template. And it will render a template called index.tt in your view directory. You can change the extension. You can change the directory name. But these are the defaults. It will render it to index. And it will send it the parameters greeting and the value welcome. So now you have in your views index.tt that has usage of a variable called greeting. It will return that. And whatever is returned from that subroutine is what the user sees. There is no exit. There's only subroutine returns. Here's our examples for variables inside the path. I have slash hello slash colon entity. Colon entity means you're going to have a variable here. It's going to be slash hello slash something. And I'm going to call it entity in the hash that you access to get it. So I can later get it using params, which re returns a parameter hash reference. And I look for entity. And then I get whatever was after the hello slash. So if I go to slash hello slash world, Entity in params will be world. Very easy. Questions so far? Cool. All right. 
regex routes. Since everything is, uh, we have text, but we also have like we have plain text, but we also have regex. So we can use a QR there and then say, well, we have a slash and then some word that we want to capture and then uh, a digit between two or three digits and then we might have something else. And in that sub, I can get them using a keyword called splat. All right? So then I get whatever was captured in the regular expression. All right. This is an example of a post uh, of a login form. So I have a post slash login. That means that whoever posted a form that goes to slash login, it will reach that subroutine. <coughs> I have a, a user that I get from the form. I have a password that I get from the form. I can validate it. I create a session using the keyword session. So I create a session using the keyword session, and I can give it a key and value, and I can otherwise just redirect them to the get of slash login. So it's that simple to do a, a login page. Yes, you're in the background. Right, in so back. uh, say you got a login form to support your mom and dad who always have two people with one password. Huh. And uh, Param's user has uh, two different values because your mom and your dad. Uh, what does the other user contain? I don't, I don't, I didn't follow the question, what? I'm saying, I submitted the form to uh, slash login. Yeah. I posted a form. It has uh, user equal one. And another user equals yeah. equal something else? Yeah. You're getting error ref of both users. Error ref? Array reference okay. of yeah. both users. <coughs> so you can have both of them. Yeah. It's actually part of the standard in, in a lot of yeah. Um I think so. I think so. So this is this is what I uh, this is my uh, case against CGIPM. <clears throat> it's not necessarily pro dancer, although dancer was the best example I could give of something really simple that is much better than CGIPM in every aspect available. But other frameworks work too. And program responsibly, go out, spread the word. Thank you.